Alright guys, I'm going to introduce you to my new BVAC that just came in the mail today. Um, and then give you some tips on what you can do to make this on your own. Um, I've made one on my own before, um, and it worked pretty well. I used it for, I think, two seasons. Um, but I didn't really like how much tweaking I had to do with it. So I went ahead and ordered one from this company. It's a Better Bee. And they're not paying me to say this, <laughs> but I like this company, so they sent me one of their catalogs. Um, they are in New York, and they do ship out of state, um, but I ordered it from them because they do have a really good track record. Uh, the product itself has quite a few users. Um, it's had a lot of reviews and uses, so you know it works. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the, the basic parts, walk you through it, and then let you know how you can make your own. Um, some of the basic parts are... Um, when it ships to you, it'll come as like four different parts. You have your main little hose that attacks, attaches to the end of your actual suction hose. So you can go, it's about two feet long. Um, it'll allow you to reach quite a bit further into stud bays and down through walls, crevices, that kind of thing. So that'll be pretty helpful. Um, then you have your hose. I think this is about a eight or ten foot hose. You can get longer ones at pretty much any hardware store. But prices do vary pretty widely depending on where you go. So um, this is the style of hose that I that they ship with this. Um, it's really flexible. It's got, if you can see the black on the inside there, is a lot more flexible than the blue. So it'll kind of increase the product lifetime. Um, this is the other end of the hose. This connects to your box here. Yeah, it, really basic, simple things that you can get at any hardware or plumbing store. Put that to the side for a minute. Okay. Next, these two kind of go together. Um, I haven't taken the plastic off this yet to unwrap the, the sheet here, this metal piece. goes on the bottom side of the box, and that's what allows the bees to get from this box, your swarm box, into the new hive um, with as little trauma <laughs> as possible. Um, here on the box, I'll show you the front first. This piece here, this little lock, has this slot here, which extends to the inside of the box. I don't know if you can quite see the shadow of it there. Um, but that's where that metal plate slides into to keep the bees actually in your box when you're removing them from whichever hive um, you're cut out. So when you go to put your, when you take them, set them on your new hive, you just open this, slide that tray out, and they'll work their way down into the other boxes. This allows your full airflow, half airflow. You can kind of adjust it to kind of monitor your bees a little bit better, but it's always recommended when you're using it to keep it fully open so that way the bees don't hit <laughs> anything on the inside there and potentially kill them or um, injure them in some way. So on the top of the box here, you've got your metal screen mesh, mesh screening here. Uh, do not use the plastic or fiberglass stuff. You, this is steel, steel mesh. Um, use steel or aluminum, it's a little, depending on price. Um, because the, the fiberglass stuff, the bees can chew through that pretty easy. So, <laughs> uh, metal is always recommended for that kind of thing. And then with this, this is the top. This is what seals the box up and then gives it suction when the metal plate is in there. Um, it's your standard, any real kind of um, wet, dry, shock vax uh, kind of top. You do have to pay attention to your watts and amperage and your suction HP um, because you don't want anything too high to just suck the bees in and kill them. But also if it's too low, then you won't suck any bees at all. So <laughs> um, one thing that I like about this is it's got a nifty little dial on it that you can adjust right here that <laughs> that helps monitor that on the inside there. So that's another reason why I like this shop, this uh, VVAT. And here, it's uh, this black part here, it's just kind of any basic silicone type caulking. Um, this is the one that stays pretty soft and rubbery when it's dry, but it dries pretty quickly. So um, those are the basic parts. Like I said, you can get them at any any basic hardware store. 
uh, Menard, you do it best center, that kind of thing. Um, again, it all depends on your pricing and that kind of stuff. And definitely look at the HP power on your shop vac. Um, that's a big point. Your metal screening is a big point, and having an easy access at the bottom is a big thing to remember or to think about. So that's my new shop vac. Um, I'm pretty excited to use it. Um, it's going to cut uh, removal times down by about two thirds or so for me because I did have my own shop vac, like I said, for a little while I was using it. Then it broke and I didn't have one for a while, so I was doing removals just by hand. And so now that I've got this sucker, I'm I'm pretty excited to use it. So definitely send me your bee calls this spring and summer and into fall. If you find anything in any of the houses or barns, buildings, that kind of stuff, definitely let me know. And I will <laughs> I'll definitely love to work with you, get out there, and get them taken care of for you. So again, any comments or questions, definitely let me know. And uh, I'll reach out to you guys again pretty soon. So.